fire ignites passion and creativity. Free your imagination with the slim, sleek and beautiful new Huawei P8. What took you so long? <laughs> Well, we've actually been here for a number of years. I think it took me a little while to finally travel here to South Africa. Um, we originally um, grew in South Africa because of the World Cup that came here. And um, today we now have 30,000 homes in Africa, 10,000 here in South Africa. And it's one of our fastest growing markets. To give me an example, here in South Africa, the guest have, travelers have grown 250% in the last year. So I think now is a really good time for me to be here and I can imagine spending more time here. We now live in an era where you can start a global company in five years. We are one of those stories. Most global companies are still American. They're mostly started in Silicon Valley, San Francisco. But there's no reason that the next great global company couldn't be started in Africa because the playing field's being leveled. At the end of the day, customers and people around the world do not care where you're from. What they care is you made something they love. And you can make something that people love from anywhere, especially a place like Nairobi or here in South Africa, if you're surrounded by other entrepreneurs, because then you have a support system. And I mean, yours is a success story of that very making. I mean, just run us through. I mean, it's an utterly remarkable well, success we story. We started it to rent. I mean, we did not start this to create a global company. We started this to pay rent one weekend. That was it. I, I had a rent check. Couldn't pay for it. So we realized one weekend, well, this International Design Conference has come to San Francisco um, and all the hotels are sold out. So let's create a bed and breakfast for the design conference. I didn't have any beds. Joe had three air beds. We pulled them out of the closet. We called it the air bed and breakfast. If you were to tell me back then that we'd have one and a half million homes, 2,000 employees, and nearly a million people every night staying, I mean, I would have thought you were crazy. In fact, I told people we one day have thousands of people and they told me I was crazy. So it just shows how ridiculous it all is. You know, there's an old saying, don't worry about people stealing your idea. If your idea is any good, everyone will dismiss it. Mm. And I think in some ways that's true, in the sense that like, if you, you were doing was obvious and everyone wanted it immediately, then somebody probably would have already done it. And so it just takes some time. And as an entrepreneur, it's a lonely road until you're successful. And you've got to be willing to walk that long road for a while. There's all these studies about how people don't trust each other anymore. And we, we and other companies like ours fly in the face of that. If that's true, then why do a million people and I live together? And it, it turns out that when you have a reputation system and when you can actually understand people's identities, then suddenly they're no longer strangers. They're yeah. just maybe a friend you haven't met yet. And I think that's a very important development. And they seem to have a shared belief system, which is I like to stay somewhere cool, funky, you know, good part of town with good Wi-Fi. Yes. This is what a friend of mine from Austin, Texas said to me. He said, I've worked it out. The Wi-Fi is always better than a hotel, it is right? Always, right, because you, ha because you live in the house and yeah. you can't live without Wi-Fi. Exactly. Um, the thing I've been surprised about as I travel the world isn't how different people are. It's how similar they are. Yeah. And it kind of sounds like a cliche, but I'll tell you, I'll go to 50 cities and it doesn't matter what city I'm in, 90% of the conversations are about the same ideas. And I think what it really means is, yes, we're always gonna have our very identification to our countries, but more and more, probably because of the internet and things like that, people are also becoming like kind of global citizens. Mm -hmm. In the 1950s, 1960s, especially in America, there was this idea of like keeping up with the Joneses and your so-called bling was the house you had, the car you drove, all that kind of stuff. And now people's bling is their like Instagram feed or exactly. their Facebook feed. It's the, in other words, it's the places they go, the people they meet, the experiences they have. People today are more proud about that than they are about the physical assets that they own. The romance around ownership is probably going away a little bit, and I think what you'll want to own in the future are the experiences and the memories that you have. Exactly, experiences. But there's a wonderful story that your grandfather, you said, has told you about how this is something old that yep. you've made new again. Yeah, I mean, when we, we came up with the concept, some people thought we were crazy, including my mom because my mom thought, are you crazy? People are gonna stay in other people's homes. And my grandfather cut in and he said, of course. This is how I used to travel when I was a kid. And it kind of reminded us that people love homes. That's why they live in them. Why can't people live in them when they travel? It turns out for generations, people did live in homes when they travel. In fact, this predates the modern hospitality industry. This is where the hospitality industry came from. Before hotels, there were bed and breakfast. And before bed and breakfast, you were just basically staying in someone's house. So it is in some ways a new idea, but in some ways it's a pretty old idea. And the only difference between the idea today and the idea hundreds of years ago is it's truly global at a scale we've never seen before. 
and it's a bit more uh, formalized.